The cardiovascular examination begins with general inspection, noting the patient's overall appearance, signs of distress, and any visible abnormalities like cyanosis or edema. Record the vital signs, including blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, and temperature. The jugular venous pressure, JVP, is observed for signs of heart failure. During inspection, look for deformities or visible pulsations in precordium, epigastrium, and neck. Palpation involves checking the radial pulse for rate, rhythm, and volume, and the carotid pulse for character and volume. Then, palpate the precordium to locate the apex beat and check for any heaves or thrills. Auscultation is crucial, listening to heart sounds at the aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral areas, noting any murmurs, rubs, or gallops. Finally, peripheral examination includes checking for peripheral pulses, edema, and signs of peripheral vascular disease. Greet your patient, have a general look, explain what you are going to do and how do you proceeding with the examination. Not forget to wash your hands before you uh, touch your patients or uh, sanitize or use a good sanitizer. Meanwhile, keep on uh, observing your patients uh, from head to toe, notice any signs of distress, notice any dyspnea or breathlessness and then start with after the general observation start with the examination of the eyes for the pallor look for the anemia examine the oral cavity for uh, dental hygiene and uh, of course the pallor as well start with the examination of the hand the noticeable thing in the hand are uh, the pallor and clubbing you can also notice down the Janeway spots, oscillate nodes or uh, palmar erythema. These may be manifestation of uh, uh, endocarditis. Examine the pulse, first the right radial pulse and uh, notice the rate, rhythm, volume, vessel wall character one by one. Don't forget to compare with the opposite side, the left radial simultaneously palpate them proceed put approximately to palpate for the brachial and then the carotids on the two sides and uh, never ever palpate the carotid simultaneously as you did for the brachial or the radial pulses locate and palpate the femoral pulse compare it with the femoral pulse on the other side now simultaneously palpate for the radial and the femoral pulse for any radiofemoral delay. Using your palm, palpate the force or strength of the pulse of the radial pulse. Ensure that the patient does not have any uh, problem with the shoulder and then raise the arm above the shoulder and if you feel that the the pulse wave after an initial high volume pulse just the dampens or collapses down this is uh, the collapsing or water hammer pulse proceed down to palpate uh, the popliteal pulses and then the foot pulses the posterior tibial on the right side the femoral Again, palpate for the femoral on the opposite side and the posterior tibial. At the same time, pressing over the floor shin, checking for the pedal edema. Make another uh, detailed assessment of the pulse uh, character and uh, rate rhythm volume and the vessel wall condition by using three finger methods proceed with the recording of blood pressure 
use appropriate sized cuff and uh, wrap it around the arm covering at least two third of the arm making sure that the tubing is on the lateral aspect first you palpate the uh, pulse and then the brachial pulse and then inflate the cuff to the maximum where the pulse disappears that would be corresponding the systolic blood pressure now proceed with the uh, auscultatory methods start lowering the pressure in the cuff till you start hearing the sound crotoc of sounds and then that would be with the corresponding the systolic pressure and lowering it to the maximum where the sounds disappear would be the diastolic blood pressure jugular venous pressure examination make sure that the light is adequate and you notice down any pulsations in the neck and when you notice down these pulsations you have to differentiate these pulsations are venous or the arterial pulses to make venous pulse more prominent you apply pressure of the right upper quadrant of the abdomen which is called as a pato jugular reflux that when you press the abdomen uh, in the right uh, say hypochondrium over the liver area there would be a rise in pressure to measure the jugular venous pressure you notice the uppermost pulsations uh, you feel and then you record the vertical height of that Uh, pulsation with reference to the sternal angle while inspecting the precordium notice down any precordial bulge deformity and pulsations in the precordial area in the neck area in the epigastric area and then you palpate first use all of your palm to locate the apex beat or cardiac apex when you feel the pulse or impulse then you have to look at it that it's outermost and lowermost definite impulse where you feel and that you do by locating the pulse using your single finger and where the maximum thrust is the felt in the outermost and lowermost part of the precordium and then you try to locate it first in the vertical position by making sure the counting the number of uh, intercostal spaces in the mid clavicular line and then you notice down its horizontal distance with reference to the mid clavicular line that it is so many centimeters outside mid clavicular line or it is displaced palpate for the uh, right ventricular heave placing your hand along the this uh, left sternal border in the, using your uh, ulnar side of the palm and then one by one at each area palpate for any trail and then locate the trachea tracheal position that the trachea is central that would tell us the medicine shift for auscultation the use your uh, diaphragm of the stethoscope place your hand over the carotid to locate or time the cardiac cycle auscultate first using the diaphragm and then using the bell note any uh, the rate and rhythm of the uh, heart sounds identify the first and second heart sound and time the cardiac cycle along with that like placing your hand over the carotid the sound which corresponds with the lift of your uh, thumb or finger palpating finger of the carotid will be corresponding with the first sound and the one which comes later would be the second sound it's better to uh, listen for good length of time so that you can hear at least 3 4 cardiac cycles uh, ask the patient to tilt slightly to the left when auscultating at the apex of the mitral area then auscultate at the lower left sternal border or the th- fourth intercostal space to the left of the sternum this would be tricuspid area you 
place your uh, stethoscope uh, inch by inch toward the epigastrium for notice any radiation of um, murmur if it is there in the epigastrium that would be originating from the tricuspid area. One by one auscultate to the left of the sternum in the secondary costal space for the aortic um, one area or the pulmonary area and then to the right of the sternum in the secondary costal space for the aortic one area. From the aortic area you move upward to trace any radiation if there is any murmur auscultated in the, the neck area. You can auscultate simultaneously for any bruit in the carotids. Make your patient sit and then auscultate again at the pulmonary and aortic area. You may make him a bit lean further to auscultate for any uh, aortic regurgitant murmur which are made prominent in the sitting positions. Okay. Okay. Auscultate okay. at each uh, place uh, or at location, okay. asking the patient to have a deep inspiration expiration. And finally, auscultate the back of the chest for any crepitations. Okay. And okay. in the sitting position, Press at the stir, uh, sacral area for any edema. Uh, palpate the abdomen for any enlargement of the liver. Palpate the spleen which may be enlarged in patient with endocarditis. And that completes the examination. Learn and practice how to summarize and present your observation. Describe all positive clinical findings in detail.